It's the 10th of June. Currently, two billion people are preparing to watch England play Paraguay in the World Cup. Anyone left over after that is at the British Grand Prix. And anyone left over after that is preparing to watch Coldplay at the Isle of Wight Festival. Not me, though. I'm on a jet bound for Austria, because I have work to do. I'm heading out to test one of the most important new cars of the year. I'm sure you recognise this. It's the Audi TT, instant design classic. Everyone thought this was brilliant when it first came out. I remember driving one of the first ones and people were falling over themselves to get a look at it. Believe it or not though, that's been around eight years. And even though it was fresh looking for 1998, it's starting to get a little bit too ubiquitous. Also, this original car was a brilliant thing, but not so stimulating to drive. And Audi reckon they've come up with a solution. This, the new Audi TT. We buy more TTs in the UK than anywhere else in Europe. The radical design of the original was a really big hit and the new car is just ever so slightly more aggressive. The cabin's less domey and a bit more coupe-ish. The new family grille gives it a sterner face and the lights are apparently inspired by a tiger ready to pounce. Now, although the new TT is actually quite a lot bigger than the old car, they've made good use of alloy and aluminium to make the car actually quite a lot lighter, which is good. There's also an option of modifying the way the car goes round the corner using magnetic dampers. There's magnetic particles that live inside the oil in the damper, and when you pass an electric current through them, they kind of all hunch up, and they can firm up the suspension round a corner. It's a bit like the system they're using on the new Ferrari 599 GTB, which is good. Inside, you'll find that the cabin's a whole... Ugh, eight centimetres longer, but you sit a lot lower too, so it feels a lot bigger and there's a whole heap more headroom, which is also good. So on paper, this car is very good, but I want to know about the driving. Unfortunately, we only managed four driving shots before I encountered a small rebellion. See, there's one problem with this whole football malarkey. The crew have found somewhere to watch the football, which means they're not moving. And that means yours truly has to do all the work. Come with me. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. If I just uh, pop the boot here. They're quite a useful boot. It makes it a more practical day-to-day -day car. This could be your only car. Some of the other little details I like. Look at the lights. They're all 3D. I just think that's quite cool. See them? And also, here on the uh, fuel filler cap, little TT sign. It's the little things, but they all count. Oh, look, there's another one. Hey, it sounds all right as well. I've never heard that from the outside before. That's quite cool. But in the back, yes, it has got rear seats, but to be honest, looking at that legroom, it's really just a shelf for putting stuff on. We were heading for Grossglockner, Austria's highest mountain. The twisty road up the 3,798 metre rock is popular with cyclists who are clearly insane. It's perfect for testing the TT. Dankeschön. And away we go. At launch, there are two versions. This one uses a 2-litre turbo straight out of the Golf GTI and costs just under 25 grand. There's also a 3.2-litre V6 complete with four-wheel drive that's 30 grand. V6 is a lot sweeter delivery. Multi-cylinder feels a lot more smooth, whereas this is a little bit more aggressive. It's more like a hot hatch. And I actually prefer this four-cylinder turbo motor. Just a bit more fun. You also get a choice of two gearboxes, it's a six-speed manual as standard, or you can option this DSG, or what Audi are calling it now, the S-Tronic system, which is that wicked dual clutch thing, where there's one clutch holding first and another holding second. When you flick one of these panels, it lets go first and engages second. Does it all in about 0.2 of a second, which is faster than you could probably do it manually. Listen to this again. And again. And again. It's like just... It's almost just like you're playing tunes with the exhaust. 
ba ba ba. It doesn't lurch, it doesn't sort of squeal around, you don't get any kind of nodding of heads. It's a really fantastic system and it's £1,450 in the UK. That's not bad. 50 quid shy of 1500 quid 1500 quid for a piece of technology that genuinely impresses you. Now, how do you reckon they've made this 50% stiffer than the old car and it certainly feels like it? Much more insistent at the wheel. You turn this in and it reacts virtually instantly, not like the old car, which sort of took its time, had a cup of tea, thought about it, then did it. It's not an out-and-out -out sports car, but you can certainly get away with quite a lot, which means it's safe, you know, a little bit of understeer, quite well balanced. You can really chuck this in with no fear of death. Whoa, yes! This is a great car. It's beautifully made, it's rewarding to drive, and no longer feels girly. And judging by the interest it caused wherever we parked, it's still the most head-turning design out there. Do you know what? I was genuinely afraid that Audi were going to over-promise and under-deliver with the new TT. I thought it would be more of the same, more of a looking-at car than a driving thing, but it's genuinely entertaining and something I'd really consider buying now. For a smidge, under the 3.2's cost price, you could have this 2-litre turbo, and the DSG gearbox and the big wheels. Well, you've got to have a bit of bling, haven't you? We're so impressed by the new TT that we've decided to give one away as this week's competition prize.